Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Hello and welcome. This is the first chapter from our Intertech class, Complete Spring Core. My name is Jim White and I'll be introducing you to the Spring Framework. Exactly what is Spring? Maybe more precisely is, what is the Spring Framework? Well, it's an open source application framework. That says a lot and maybe not too much depending on how you view it and depending on what your background is. Open source, of course, means it's a freely available to the general public for use and, for that matter, for modification. You can change the Spring Framework to meet your needs. There are many frameworks out there in the Java community. Most notably, there are frameworks such as Struts that allows us to develop things like Web MVC applications. You might also be familiar with things like Hibernate to allow us to persist object data into a relational database. The Spring Framework, however, is what we call a whole application framework. In other words, it isn't meant to address a particular layer, it's meant to address all layers of our application environment. So it's a framework that provides code, libraries, as well as guidance and structure about how to put entire applications together. It originated from Rod Johnson. He's an Australian who wrote a book back in 2002 that essentially said there's probably a better way to build applications than using some of the Java 2 enterprise framework that we have available today. Not that the J2E framework isn't good, but it is a little bit cantankerous to use in terms of its complexity and really gets to low-level details without giving us maybe something that abstracts away some of the complexity. Spring 1 was released in 2004. Today we're up to version 3. Uh, this uh, slide set is a little bit dated. It's now in final release when the final release has of December of 2009. So given its age and comparison to other frameworks, it's a relative newcomer to the Java landscape. You'll find out lots more about the Spring Framework at springframework.org. Again, why was it created and what's its purpose? To reduce the complexity observed in a lot of the Java enterprise application environment. Again, most notably in things like enterprise Java Bean. The name Spring Framework and in particular Spring Beans, which really make up a large portion of the Spring Framework, has a name that, if you will, kind of is parallel to the name Enterprise Java Bean, both containing that Bean name for a reason. Mr. Johnson felt that there really needed to be a better and improved way of building applications, a better Bean environment, if you will. And so Spring tries to do that. In his own words, Mr. Johnson said that Java Enterprise applications are overly complex and take a lot of time to develop. So how can we improve that? How can we, out of the box, provide a more attractive environment? J2E does a great job of standardizing our low-level APIs and providing us a means to write once and run anywhere. But in many cases, it's much too complex for the average developer to have to get into all the details of all those APIs in order to build even the simplest of applications. So Spring is meant to be a lightweight framework. By that, what do we mean? Well, it's meant to try to reduce the complexity you ordinarily find in a lot of the Java Enterprise APIs. Spring leverages plain old Java objects, POJOs, or maybe a little bit more precisely, Java Beans, to try to build enterprise type of applications. However, it should be noted that just because the framework is there to help us build enterprise applications, we don't have to be working on an enterprise application. It could be a non-enterprise environment that we're building. Say, for example, a swing application that's going to run on clients that maybe communicates with back-end enterprise systems. Spring can be used for that as well. So Spring is an environment that helps us build all types, shapes, and sizes of Java applications and tries to do so in a way that's not maybe as complex as we might find in some of the underlying APIs, the Java Enterprise APIs that it uses underneath the covers. Now that adjective lightweight that we talked about in the previous slide is used in several connotations with regard to Spring. Yep, it's lightweight and it helps reduce complexity, but literally, physically, it's also lightweight in size and code. In other words, if we take a look at the Spring framework, at least in its initial distribution, the jar size was about 2.5 meg. If you look at lots of frameworks out there, especially given the fact that Spring framework does so much for us, looking at it in comparison to a lot of other frameworks, that's pretty tiny. 
Now, it's gotten a little bit bigger since its initial releases, and today, too, it's not released in a single JAR file. We'll talk more about that later on in class. But still, with regard to its behavior, it still tries to be what we call non-intrusive in a lightweight fashion as well. In other, words, in other words, rarely requiring any of our application code to extend or implement something in the Spring framework. In other words, rarely do we have to extend or implement some Spring class or interface in order to make our applications work. Why is this important? Well, it allows for us to take out the Spring framework without tearing out all of our application. In other words, it works to be non-intrusive and incorporate best-of-breed frameworks and best-of-breed ideas without causing large chunks of our application code to have to change. Now, it should be noted that there are alternatives to the Spring Framework. In fact, Spring Framework brings together lots of ideas that we'll be talking about throughout class, things like dependency injection and aspect-oriented programming. But these concepts existed long before Spring ever came into fruition. Spring just happened to make them very, very popular. So when we talk about these alternatives, these alternatives in many cases are older than Spring. For example, if you take a look out there on the World Wide Web and search for things like dependency injection frameworks, you might find something called Pico Container or HiveMind, which is now no longer really being maintained and has kind of been co-opted by a lot of the other ideas and frameworks that are available to us today in the Java community. Google, in fact, has another lightweight dependency injection framework that is starting to gain some acclaim called Juice. So Spring, yes, it is a framework for entire application development, and it is the largest and most feature-rich, at least in this author's opinion. However, it is not the only framework, but it does still continue to receive overwhelming support given its size and given its capabilities. It has become very, very popular very, very quickly. Now, Spring has some philosophies about how applications should be built, and these philosophies are intertwined around the API and the constructs available to us in the Spring environment. Many of these originated with, again, Mr. Jensen's book, Expert One-on-One, -on -One, Java 2 Enterprise. So what are some of these philosophies? Well, first of all, Rod Johnson and company felt that enterprise applications should be, again, easy to create. In fact, in some cases, you might actually find the word fun associated with application development again. When's the last time you had fun building an enterprise application? The framework should again be lightweight. We talked about how that is both in its non-intrusive behavior as well as physically in its size and shape and makeup as far as distribu dis distribution of the JAR files. We talked about how the framework should be non-intrusive, providing us a mechanism to build applications but not having us to lock in to the Spring API through either extending classes or interfaces uh, implemented by Spring. The idea is we should be following best-of-breed solutions, and Spring espouses the fact that you should use best-of-breed solutions, which in some cases may not be the Spring framework. And they believe the API should dovetail into whatever that best-of-breed solution might be. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.